Good afternoon again. It's my real honor to introduce our mayor, the mayor of Baltimore City, Stephanie Rawlings-Blake. Mayor Rawlings-Blake, the daughter of a pediatrician and a political powerhouse, graduated from the Baltimore City Public Schools. Uh, before spending a brief exile um, in, uh, at Oberlin College, she returned to attend the University of Maryland Law School and has been heavily engaged in the political uh, and civic life of our city ever since. In 1995, she became the youngest person ever to be elected to the Baltimore City Council. Four years later, she took over as vice president of the council and in 2007 became president and has served as mayor of our city since 2010. Mayor Rawlings-Blake, as you all well know, has instituted a number of critical and innovative programs during the tenure, including the Vacants to Value Initiative, designed to revitalize Baltimore by converting abandoned buildings into safe and secure homes for our families. It's hard to think of uh, a, a better um, program to address some of the issues that you've been spending your day here uh, talking and learning about. She's also um, set out an ambitious goal to grow Baltimore by 10,000 families. And I want to say here for the record, uh, Mayor, that um, you can check one off the list. My family moved here a couple of years ago from out of state when I took this job at Johns Hopkins. So, um, um, so I'm pleased to be here and um, help you along in your, uh, toward that goal. We at Johns Hopkins are um, grateful and thankful for your dedicated partnership and your um, dedicated leadership and service to our city. Uh, so please join me in welcoming someone who is always welcome at Johns Hopkins, Mayor Stephanie Rollins. Thank you very much for that warm welcome and the kind introduction. I'm glad to be here for the fourth annual Social Determinants of Health Symposium. And I'm honored to be joined by so many of you who are committed to growing a, a safer Baltimore as well as a healthier Baltimore. Thank you for shedding light on an issue that continues to ravage our community. And that is, of course, uh, trauma. We know that many in the predominantly African-American communities continue to experience significantly higher frequency of traumatizing events. Some averages show that people within these communities are losing as much as 20 years of, off of their life expectancy due to trauma side effects such as violence, as well as other concerns from diabetes and heart disease. I'm not content to let these communities go on and suffer. I don't expect that anything has to be the way that it is. There is always room for change and new opportunities for us to do better. I want to fight for them just as many of you uh, who are here want to do. As mentioned, a key goal of my administration, and thank you for helping me to achieve my goal, is to grow our, fam our city by 10,000 families over the next decade. We know that in order to grow a city, yes, we need to have uh, to attract new residents, but I believe more importantly, we also have to give those residents who are here more reasons to stay, and that means ensuring that everyone in our city has access to the resources that they need. It also means that everyone has the ability to live long, healthy, and trauma-free lives. There is no one issue or policy that gets us where we want to be. We have to attack these problems on multiple fronts. I've chosen to focus on a, key er a few key areas that we know build stronger communities, better schools, blight elimination, and more services to help residents stay healthy. We are investing nearly $1 billion to build new and fully renovated schools. This is the first time uh, these new schools have been built in a generation, Thousand, as well. Thousands of uh, vacant and dilapidated buildings are being torn down through programs like Vacants to Value. And initiatives like Be More for Healthy Babies continue to provide world-class services to new and expecting mothers. We can clap for that. You got me all off track, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to thank my health commissioner, Dr. Wen, who has hit the ground sprinting over the first over the her first few months. She actually started working before she even was able to uh, before she was on the payroll. 
Um, and she was already on the ground meeting with people, uh, laying the groundwork for her time as health commissioner. Under her leadership, we prioritized the need for trauma-informed practices. Baltimore is very, very lucky to have you, Dr. Wen. I hear that all the time, wherever I go. Anyone that's had an opportunity to, to meet with you uh, says that we have, we have achieved a coup by getting, stealing you away from uh, Washington, and I'm very glad that you are here. I'm very confident that with your leadership, we can reduce trauma and its impact on all of our residents. While all of these efforts are changing the trajectory of many of our families, we know that our work is far from done. There's still far too much violence and senseless killing, particularly in our African American communities. Of our 211 homicides last year, 189 of those victims were African American men. We must continue to strive to end the violence in our communities. Last month, I convened a group of community leaders and experts for frank and honest conversations about what we could do together to help stop the violence, especially when it comes to supporting our young men of color. This conversation was inspiring and motivating, and everyone in attendance went home that night ready to do more. The response since that conversation has been remarkable, and I want to thank everyone who's answered the call to action. Hundreds of men have come forward to mentor young men in our city, and I'm excited about the possibilities as we move forward with this initiative. These are just a few of the things that are happening in our city to address trauma, but we know that government cannot do this work alone. I want to take a moment to acknowledge the leaders and agencies researching, organizing, and improving our response as we work to prevent trauma. And work to heal our communities. The Mayor's Office on Criminal Justice, along with the Johns Hopkins Center for Adolescent Health, is leading the Prevent and Deter Working Group to increase trauma-informed response in 16 communities. I want to thank my team this year. Right now, we are already seeing early successes in three communities, McElderry Park, Upton, and Sandtown Winchester, where the mental health first aid is being provided by the uh, American Red Cross. The Department of Health and Mental Hygiene is also providing trainings while agencies are undergoing reviews to become more trauma-informed. Communities are developing their own response to traumatic incidents, thanks to Safe Streets and the Baltimore City Police Department, as well as others. We're also striving to build a, the, excuse me, build the best trauma-informed care network by learning from the model in Philadelphia. I understand that many of the leaders from, Phila from the Philadelphia model are in the audience today. Any Philadelphia people here? Just one, maybe two. All right. I had a nice conversation with your mayor earlier today. Uh, he has uh, been a mentor of mine. Thank you for being here. I wish you would have brought a cheese steak, but that's another. Yeah, you gotta try the roast pork. Yeah, the roast pork too. I'm, don't say that, really. I'm, I'm there. I was so excited. I'm on another note. When the DNC announced that you're doing the convention, I've already got my restaurants lined up. I will have to do official work, but there will be a lot of um, anyway side trips. But welcome. Welcome. I want to thank you for hosting Baltimore's leaders last month to discuss uh, their expertise and to share best practices. I, I always feel we work better when we work better together. And I am I'm always eager uh, to work with other jurisdictions because I feel like there's so much we can learn from one another. While we know that healing and change will not come overnight, I'm grateful to each of you who are committed partners in the network. So again, uh, thank you for all of today's presenters, and I look forward to seeing what we can take away to improve the lives of Baltimoreans. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, the hour clearly is late. We do have a few uh, closing remarks and observations uh, from Provost Lieberman. So let me turn the podium back to you. Thank you. A very few, I promise. 
Um, I'm told that you had a very productive day. I heard a little bit of the tail end. I, uh, of course, heard the mayor. Um, Bob helpfully provided me with a long list of points to summarize some of the uh, highlights, um, which, given the late hour, I will spare you, since you were all here listening to them. Um, so I also know that not only did you have a productive day, you had a, had a long day, so I'm going to be short. First of all, I want to thank all of you presenters, uh, attendees, uh, questioners, um, for investing your time, for investing yourself so generously in the lives of our city and the lives of our citizens, particularly our children. I'm inspired, all of us at the university are inspired by your thoughtful dedication to making Baltimore a better, healthier, and more equitable city. And thanks to you, I and my colleagues here at the university are brimming with optimism that our future will be brighter than uh, even today. Now, as many of you know, I've spent most of my uh, professional life as a college professor, as a teacher. As a result, um, I can't resist um, the urge to assign you with some homework. The people who slipped out before I started talking obviously knew what they were doing. Um, one of the great minds of, of our generation, or any generation for that matter, is the Harvard scientist E.O. Wilson, who wrote that we are drowning in information while starving for wisdom. Essential to our future, he continued, are people able to put together the right information at the right time, think critically about it, and make important choices wisely. If this quotation strikes you as familiar, that you might have read this in uh, Nick Kristof's column in the New York Times a couple of days uh, uh, ago. I just want to say for the record um, that we had it in my remarks before he published it. Um, I'm going to start probing for a leak in my office. Um, as you know, this is a very sensitive document. Um, but in all seriousness, my assignment to you, to all of us, is to be the people who put together the right information at the right time to think about solutions, to keep the conversation and the collaboration going, to continue the hard work that you do, and make the important choices to inform all of us to help the people of our city, cities around the country and around the world, to fulfill their limitless potential. And with that, I want to close the proceedings. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening.